Good morning, everyone. We are out in northern Alabama today in search of snakes. We finally got a day that's not raining. It's been literally like four straight days of rain or mostly rain. And uh, Reed here has been having a little bit of a tough time this trip. We've gotten to see lots of salamanders and even a couple of really good snakes. But hopefully here on the last day of the trip, we'll be able to turn up some good stuff. We've already found our first snake of the day before we even really got started. So I'm going to cut to that now and uh, hopefully we'll be able to turn up more after that guy too. So here is the first snake of the day I found before I even started the video. Dude. So we just hit the field. I haven't even run an intro and I flipped this rock. I already know what's under it, but there's nowhere it's going to go. So I put it back down. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what on earth? That is literally the first rock we've touched today. Yes, it is. And I was saying, oh man, I hope the snakes are going to be up today because the weather's been a little bit iffy. And sure enough, they're up. So hopefully this will be the first of many. I'm going to have the GoPro running all day. And uh, yeah, let's hope we can find some more. So yeah, very nice scarlet king snake. We're over here in Alabama today. And uh, I never got an opportunity to run an intro, so I'm gonna have to run an intro and put it before all this. But yeah, first snake of the day, the thing we were looking for. Beautiful little Scarlet King snake. So it's about 52 degrees, I think the car said right now. It's supposed to get up into the mid 60s. And the last couple of days, if you saw my most recent episodes, were just very rainy and cold. So this is a very, very welcome find considering how the last couple of days have gone. And hopefully there will be plenty more snakes to be seen today. So we're going to get some quick photos of this guy and put him back under his rock. All right, guys. First snake of the day. Beautiful little Scarlet King. Exactly what we were hoping to see out here today. Going back under his rock. Not very gracefully, but going back nonetheless. What an awesome way to start the day. Let's see what else it has in store for us. All right, guys. Here's our next snake of the day that Reed flipped. This little guy is a midwestern worm snake over here in alabama they're pretty much all going to be midwesterns except for maybe in some portions of the state but definitely in this area we get midwesterns and you can tell this guy's actually notably different looking from the ones back home his belly is a lot more pink than the ones we get back in georgia even the the midwesterns so yeah very interesting second snake of the day a little midwestern worm snake i expect we might see a couple more of these so we're just going to put this guy back he's very small just like the scarlet king Really nice looking, actually. It is. Here's a nice looking slimy salamander and a Webster eye with a recently broken tail. These guys were both under that big rock right there. And we're probably going to be seeing lots of both of these today, so we're just going to let them go back where we found them. All right, guys, well, we've been at this about an hour and a half now, and we have seen just the worm snake, and I have not personally flipped the snake since we left the parking lot where I found that Scarlet King, so... It's been a weird day so far, not gonna lie. I'm not necessarily upset, I'm just confused. So <laughs> we're gonna get back to work and hopefully we'll get right into some good microhabitat and maybe that'll help our struggles. So we're gonna keep at it. Here's a ring neck. First flip clip I've gotten today. Very nice. This guy's a nice little integrate between northern and southern ring neck. You can see He's kind of got a partially solid belly. And then back here, he's got spots. So it's a pretty textbook integrated northern southern, in my opinion. But very nice. First ring neck of the day. It took way too long. Ring neck. It's a good start. If I can get him real quick. All right, guys, we've kind of moved to a new area, and this little ring neck is the first find. He's got his mouth open, which is weird, but... Anyways, that last area just wasn't producing snakes. We got that Scarlet King right off the bat, and then pretty much nothing else. We got that worm snake and ring neck, so this is only our fourth snake of the day, even though we started the day with exactly what we were looking for. This guy's a more typical southern ring neck, not too much in the way of integrate influence on this one by the looks of it. But either way, just happy to actually be finding snakes at this spot, so hopefully it'll produce a few more. A big ring neck. 
Jeez. Look at that. Titanic. So two ring necks back to back at this next spot. So hopefully that's a good sign. Ring neck. No northern influence according to the belly either. Actually, there's no spots after the tail. I don't know if that's normal or not. But yeah, we're getting into some snakes right here. So that's a good thing. Another ring neck. Wow, we find snakes. Another big one too. Very nice. Good stuff. Two ring necks here right next to each other. Two big ones as well. Ring neck, yet again. And a scorpion. Scorpion, oh. Scorpion and ring neck. How's your belly look? Pretty normal. Ring neck. Lots of ring necks right here and not much else. Worm snake. That's a new one. Well, we got one earlier, but that's a nice adult. Very cool. Good stuff. Worm snake number two. We found more snakes in the last 10 minutes than we have all day. That's not even a joke. Nah, it's fine. We got a ringy. Good stuff. Giant rocks that should have king snakes have nothing but ring necks. That's like number what, seven or eight in this little area? Six. Six. Actually looks a little better now. It's more flat. Oh yeah! <laughs> well, it took literally all day, but we finally got another one. Right here with all these ring necks. And it's huge. It's a big adult. Oh my god, I'm so exhausted from flipping rocks. We've been flipping so hard. And then finally, seeing that underneath the rock after flipping for... It's probably been like six or seven hours at this point since we got the first one. You can see how covered in sweat I am. It's not even particularly hot out here. You can also see we are legitimately up in the mountains. This seems like more of a place that you'd be finding milk snakes under rocks, and we're just finding dope Scarlet Kings. <laughs> Look at this snake. Holy balls. That is just heinous. I mean, I'm shaking. I, my whole body is shaking. We worked our fingers to nubs today for this beautiful little snake. Oh my goodness gracious. So, big adult Scarlet King, really what we were hoping to see today. The little one was awesome, of course, but I missed the flip clip. And God forbid something goes wrong with the footage, but I got the flip clip on this guy. I'm, I'm going to go knock on this tree real quick, because whenever I get a flip clip that good, bad things tend to happen with my equipment. But just wow, what a beautiful snake. And the belly on this thing. The reflection, I mean, it's just kind of hard to really believe after all those rocks with nothing under them today. And we finally got into some snakes and sure enough, beautiful Scarlet King. And we're still not done. We've got a little more habitat to hit. All right, well, we're gonna take some quick shots of this guy and put him back under his rock, but just mother of God, unbelievable. That's what I live for right there, that exact moment. Look at that belly. Holy crap. The iridescence hurts my head. There we go. That is so awesome. All right, we got a little more light today, so we're going to keep flipping, see if we can get something else. But it's hard to complain about how we've done so far. All right, guys, we are most of the way home at this point, and uh, yeah, it was a really weird day. We got a Scarlet King to start off the day and then a Scarlet King to end the day with a whole lot of unproductive back breaking rock flipping in between. 
Uh, but I'm definitely glad we ended up switching up our strategy and going to a different spot at the end of the day because it definitely panned out well. All right, guys, so I'm going to show the day before this video was recorded next, mostly because it was just salamanders and I didn't want to put it in front of all the snakes for the people who aren't as interested in salamanders. So for the salamander people, here comes your part of the video. Good morning, everybody. It is the next day from when you guys last saw me. And today is basically like yesterday, but way more rainy. So we're out here in central Alabama planning to do mostly salamanders, but Hopefully we'll be able to find some snakes too. So we're gonna get after it and I'll update you guys when we find something. So this area is some fantastic mud snake habitat, but it's, it's very dry right now and this rain is gonna be much needed to hopefully fill up this pond and get all the reptiles and amphibians active again because it has been a pretty slow couple of weeks for the most part. Really just the last two weeks have been kind of slow. But there's kingfishers buzzing around this pond. It looks like a fantastic place to see some salamanders. So we're gonna kick around here and see what we can turn up. Well, it's taking frustratingly long, but we just got our first salamander of the day. There's a nice little three line salamander as flipped. He's actually fairly a little bit larger than the ones we've been seeing lately, but still not as big as they get. So yeah, these guys should be pretty common out here. So I expect we'll probably see more, but we kind of had to work for this guy, so. Might end up being a kind of slow day out here, surprisingly. Here is another three-line salamander, a couple logs down the trail from the first one. This guy is actually almost fully grown. I mean, they'll definitely get a little bigger than that, but that's a pretty typical sized adult with that long tail. And unsurprisingly, these guys are closely related to long-tailed salamanders. So more or less just a Southern uh, representative of the long-tailed salamander group really cool salamanders and uh, they really like these kind of seepy floodplains like we're in now so it's pretty ideal habitat for them here's another species that is very common in this type of habitat the marbled salamander reed found one over there and i've got another one right here the big thing we're hoping to see out here today is a gulf coast mud salamander but the overall salamander activity is kind of dismal considering how perfect the weather is today so we may get one we may not all right, there's the one Reed found and the one I found, so very nice. Two of these guys, I'm assuming we'll probably see quite a few more because this is pretty ideal habitat, but we're really hoping for a mud today, so we're gonna get back to it. Here's another marbled man. That one's real nice. Look at that. And there's a slimy over there too. Nice double flip. All right, guys, Reed just flipped his lifer spotted salamander. Oop, and it's this gentleman. This is a little yearling. Come here. And uh, surprisingly, he doesn't have any orange spots. He's all yellow, which I would have expected being as close as we are to home that they'd look pretty similar. But this guy's actually quite different looking. It's kind of neat. Hopefully we can turn up some adults and get a, a sampling of what they look like in this area. And here's a nice big adult spotted. Look at that guy, just tucked into this nice super saturated log. Once again, all yellow spots, no orange. All right, we're gonna put this guy back under his log and keep at it, but nice adult female spotted salamander. All right guys, here's our next salamander and something I'm kind of surprised it took us this long to turn up because this is an area where they are quite common. This is the Hillis's dwarf salamander. We found a couple of these guys, and once again, these guys are very small. We found a couple of them in Georgia this winter, so I'm not gonna talk too much about him, but a fairly common salamander here in the coastal plain portions of their range. So we're just gonna put this guy back under his log, but this is a lifer for Reed, so he's gonna get some pictures real quick before we release him. All right, here's another little Hillis's dwarf salamander. Let's see, this guy's actually as flipped under a really gigantic log. This is like, it's getting a little bit ridiculous with the slimy salamanders. One there, one there, and that really pretty one right there. Three under one log. And here's another hillisai. These guys have become very common all of a sudden. We've seen a couple in this little area. Still have not seen our mud salamander though. We're gonna keep at it. It's about, what is it, like 1 p.m. right now? Uh, it is almost two. Almost two, so we've been out here for the better part of the day at this point and have not seen our target. But we have seen a lot of salamanders and had a lot of fun. So it hasn't been a bad day. It just hasn't been 
a day where we find what we're looking for necessarily. Indeed. <laughs> Hello everyone. We are back at home. It is raining still. It started raining really hard, so we kind of dipped and decided to go get lunch and uh, come home and wait for it to get dark and then walk around. So we're here and here's our first salamander of the night, a nice big spotted in my driveway. Weirdly enough, this guy is one of the more unattractive ones I've seen around here. I actually think this is a postpartum female, probably out hunting worms. You can see her cloaca is not swollen at all. And she's rather dull, and a lot of times the females tend to be a little bit duller than the males. So anyways, we're just going to leave this girl be and go see if we can move a couple off the road. And here is yet another one right at the bottom of the driveway. And this also looks like potentially a postpartum female. A little bit thin and kind of dull and a very big salamander. These females get really big, which I assume is helpful in carrying around a load of eggs and being more productive with reproduction. So really cool. Not as pretty as we were kind of hoping to see. I really want to find one of the nice orange ones for Reed because we've been finding these yellow ones all day. It is unseasonably cool out here. And because of that, it's kind of quiet. There's not much calling, at least immediately near us, but there are some distant peepers. And here is a lone peeper making his way across the road. So we're gonna make sure this guy gets across safely. That was not a lone peeper as it would turn out. There were three in this little area. Here's another one. There's a big one, a couple dead ones. There's a four toed too. There we go. That's a little bit of an orange head. Looks like another female maybe? That one looks like it could be a boy, but it's heading away from the pools, so. There's a big salamander up here. Look at that. Oh yeah. That is awesome. Very cool. Another big one. This one actually looks like it could be a boy to me, but heading away from the pools once again. I'm guessing they are wrapping up for the year. There's one. Yep, we got two complete four toads. Dang, that's a nice looking one. Look at those stripes on the side, like kind of chevrons. It's a really good looking one. And then right here is another one. Going the other direction. Yeah, he really did get across the road pretty fast. Here's another spotty. That is a pretty orange one, actually. And that one does look like it's a boy. He's got kind of deflated looking cloaca, but very nice. Good numbers of these guys out tonight, which is what we were kind of hoping for since Reed hasn't gotten to witness a big ambistoman migration before, so. We got a decent sized one tonight. All right, so there's kind of a ridiculous spattering of frogs right here. We got two peepers, and then we've got three peepers there, and then we've got four peepers, five peepers, and, uh, I might have shown that one already, but I think that's a new one. Six peepers. Yeah, 